next session is entitled how to take the YLD program to the next level. Later on we will have a discussion regarding your workshops uh, from yesterday and also we will have another workshop uh, regarding regional action plan uh, and also uh, plans to, uh, for next year uh, according to your region. Look at this. 59 people attending this training from many different countries all over the world. In this moment, we have 103 members in total. We hope that we will inc uh, increase that number very soon. It depends on you, it depends on your countries, it depends on your regions. And that's the reason why it's uh, crucial to make your role as regional representatives, elected uh, uh, or ongoing uh, representatives for the region, you should emphasize your role in your region to increase the number of new young leaders. You have a document how some person can become a young leader. You have that on your emails, uh, you have it on, on your tables printed out. And <coughs> what is our goal? In order to have a global reach, we need to extend that YLD network. It's not easy. It's not easy just having meetings like this, but you are very good in social media. You have uh, lots of contacts with uh, young colleagues who all, uh, uh, also have diabetes in your region or in your country. So you can do it by yourself. And any single person can do a lot for the program. This program is not a program of just of IDF or uh, of chair or uh, regional representatives or elected regional representatives. It's a program of any single person with diabetes who is younger than 30. But to join the program has to fulfill some criteria. And now we will uh, try to see how we can uh, increase the awareness of uh, diabetes and also how can we uh, increase the number of uh, young leaders in diabetes. In this workshop, we will try to do how to do that. It is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is Professor Jan Brosch from Brac, from Czech, Czech Republic. And he published several uh, booklets, book, books for people with diabetes. He is very good in education, not just uh, student education, although he is a professor of medicine, but also he is very good in education of people with diabetes. And he published eight or ten books. He will, he will say, say that even, uh, it's probably even more. His books were uh, translated in many different languages. Also, his topic is about diabetes and driving. And many other uh, topics uh, were covered by his books. Why I think that it's very important. He can teach us how to create your own edu educational material in, uh, within your own society or association, how to educate people with diabetes, and also how to motivate young people also uh, to educate other people with diabetes. So, Professor Broch, thank you very much for coming. That, uh, thank you, Dario, for a nice introduction. So, uh, just... Uh, one sentence about myself. I work in this hospital, which is probably the largest one in Central and Eastern Europe, taking care for almost one million patients per year. Of them, more than 25% are diabetics. And because of that high number, we were forced to create as effective way of education of diabetic patients as possible. So my talk is going to be very briefly about knowledge what we have learned from our experience and then I will try to show you some of our projects which are also open for you to join us. So this is a very simple slide telling that uh, uh, everything uh, or nothing can be done by ourselves, that everything you should be perfect and you should be uh, for many people, understandable is based on 
two main parts. One part is science, which is trying to show and find what is perfect, what is what is the real true, and the second part is the experience. And experience is trying to prove the science, science uh, knowledge in a real praxis. Yes. So all these three things go to, together and influence themselves in both ways. Yes. So praxis gives, again, the, the, uh, the feedback to scientists and the, the progress is moving on. Yes. So based on this, if you want to create anything, even something which looks like very simple, just adding information to the others, but it's not really as simple. You, you, you need to have some experience, you need to have some knowledge, you need to have some proper ways how to deliver the information. So to create anything, you should have, have, have these people on, on your board, patient giving you the feedback with it, what you are telling them they th is understandable and it's, it works in daily practice. Doctor who is also experienced and who is gathering information from, from many sides. Educator, again, person experienced in, in educating and in, in ways how to use the words and different, different media to influence patients. And scientists, as I mentioned, giving the the real true background, what should be told to diabetic patients to keep their diabetes under control. Yes. Uh, here are some traditional ways of spreading information. So I created one simple example about insulin therapy. We, this is one of our book for doctors. And the traditional way is that doctors read the book uh, attend some conferences to gather the knowledge and then they are trying to, to, to send them to patients, yes. And this way is quite, <coughs> quite long uh, and has, is limited by number of doctors and again by quality of doctors, yes. But this traditional way up to 90s was the only way how the information was, was going from the center to the patients, yes. At this time, we've got modern ways of spreading information, and we can, in a way, bypass this old traditional way uh, on the one side with books, with TV, and it, it, with radios, and on the second part with websites and with Facebook. Which, so this, these ways are also limited uh, by such a thing as quality of materials and also the level of audience, because not all the patients are able to do that by themselves and many of them just need to to be guided by a doctor or educator but this is especially this websites and facebook's are are the media which can influence a lot of people a lot of diabetic patients and can send the the information to the right to the right point so now i will tell you something about our project so we started with books we also involved some of our patients to cooperate on them and to be part of, of authorships. So, for example, this book is, well, it's in Czech, but it's called Di Diabetes and Insulin in a different way, and it's actually written by our patient together with us, and this is the very, very successful one, maybe the most successful one, because it, it, it's pointing to insulin area through the eyes of of the patient. Yes. Actually, all of these books uh, in Czech, we publish more than 750,000 issues up to now. And all together, we created a set of books with more than 20, 20 small books. And every year, we add one or two more and send them to patients which, which has been involved in this program. So in Czech Republic, or in our center, every new patient uh, is, will got this set of books and uh, is trained to how, how, they, how to use them and is also in a way examined about the knowledge uh, which he or she, she gathered. And every new book is sent him by post to, to spread, uh, to get new information. 
we also translated some of the books to foreign languages in form of e-books and it, we started to do that for uh, international patients living in Czech Republic and now we are trying to spread them to the to the different different uh, countries so of course we are we are email so we are internet because to print it would be really expensive so again the internet is a very good way how to spread the information in these in these days yes. And uh, with such amount of information or written information we gathered, we in in the middle of uh, in the middle of last decade, when there was real lack of educators in Czech Republic, Czech Republic we we created the Dia Centrum CZ as internet site for type one diabetic patients. Yes. So it was very simple. We it has about 105. 50 pages, and it it covers all the all the areas of insulin treatment. Yes. After a few years of running this site, we looked at it through Google Analytics, and we saw that every year uh, we had at least 5,000 5, visitors who spent that site at least one minute. So uh, one minute meant for us that uh, person who entered the site is really looking for something and reading at least one or two pages. So, uh, so it was at least 5,000 diabetic patients per year, individual users. And we saw that, that through these seven years, more than two thirds of all type one diabetic patients in Czech Republic came to this site and used it as a source of information. Yes. So this was uh, quite, uh, and we also published this result in a respected international journal for doctors and to trying to spread this information because this is really very simply, uh, very simple way how you can deliver information. Just put it on internet and uh, let, it, let it work. Yes. Last year we started with another type of sites which is more sophisticated uh, in a way that it's really alive, that we change it twice a week and it's devoted to type 2 diabetic patients in this way. And it's consisted of, of uh, uh, internet site, again gathering information, here are the, here are the expert information regarding to diabetes about what is diabetes, how it's cured, what types of drugs you can use and so on. And this is the block site, which is more lifestyle. And we have one lifestyle article per year, per week, sorry, and we have another article which is more expert, experts per year. So two articles, one lifestyle which is gathering people to the site because type 2 diabetic patients are not really keen to know much about the disease. But they are, they are interested to see something about food, about how to cook, to, to have healthy food and such a thing. Yes. And, and we add a piece of experts information to this. We also have Facebook Facebook uh, page uh, related to the sites and again twice a week we have one or we have twice a week we have we we issue an uh, an uh, information to Facebook yes. so in the end uh, we are able through this Facebook deliver information to more than 100,000 patients yes, based on Facebook and we know that at least three rather 5,000 users per month is interacting with our with our website and gathering gathering information so again this is just another way how to how to use internet or other type of social medias for spreading information Dario mentioned that we are working on diabetes and driving and this is 
one of our international projects which is just now developing we have a very simple ebook about three or four pages ebook for diabetic patients to prevent them from car accidents especially due to hypoglycemia and we have it in english and now we are starting to translate it to to different languages and again there is a site called dia, dia, Drive, dia driving org and the books are placed on that site and everyone can freely ca ca come and, and uh, download them yes yeah, so this is again the offer for you if someone would like to join us in translation translating or so on is welcome <coughs> and the last thing i want to show you is that we uh, we focused on the word uh, regarding our success with the centrum cz this internet site and we focus on the word uh, for are for to, to for our areas with uh, lack of education and one of the areas with very lack of education is uh, sub-saharan africa so we did a simple survey which has been published uh, just in november and we found that there are only six websites in this area giving just very simple information what is diabetes yeah. so again this is the area for your effort or people from sub-saharan africa if there are some sitting among you are welcome to join us and to work on this uh, together yes. just six websites not more than with four or five pages exist in this area so this is really this is really opportunity how to spread the information through the internet and just to show you that we are not only sitting <laughs> next to next to computer this is uh, one of our projects which we have run in nepal so it's uh, it's sort of diabetic clinic mainly focused on internal medicine but with diabetic program and actually it's surprisingly Kathmandu is among the largest city on the fifth place is this prevalence of type 2 diabetics so there are many many patients with type 2 diabetes so so we created this uh, this project and this is our clinic and what we do besides the delivering medical care in this clinic we also do the screening of diabetes in some rural areas of of nepal and this is a picture of uh, one of this one of these days so we invite people uh, with diabetes or with risk of diabetes for example to to a school which we rent for a weekend and then we test them according to diabetes and we usually have uh, three or four hundred patients per day testing and this is my last slide just to offer you participation in this very simple simple project and this is insulin passport we call it insulin passport and we give it to give it to our patients for uh, traveling with plane yes and the passport is uh, in nine languages telling that the person is diabetic and and he or she needs to to carry insulin insulin pump glucometer and so on so simply just tick one of these one of these sentences according to what you need and your doctor will uh, just give you a stamp that it's true and all our patients are easily traveling with this insulin passport through whole the world so this would be very easy to to print it and create it in your own your country so if you if some of you is interested to participate in this project just give me a mail and that's all and thank you for your at attention
Okay, so just we have been speaking a bit about social media these last days. Uh, I put a paper over there for those of you that didn't still know the Facebook and the Instagram of the young leaders. Uh, we also have the hashtag, so I hope that you are sharing. So just a bit of information for you. We have a Facebook that has uh, a bit uh, over 3,000 likes. Uh, however, we haven't been very active this year. It's true that we need to find another way to coordinate better. So this is what this workshop is about. And then on Instagram, we have, well, uh, 137 uh, followers, and we are following almost as many it's people like as... Uh, hmm? It's like 200 now. Oh, okay, okay, so all of you, I hope. <laughs> okay, super. So, uh, ideas to reactivate our communication channel. So this is something uh, in January we had a meeting with the interim committee in Brussels, and one of the things that we were discussing was precisely how to approach this. So one of the ideas that we had was to do it regionally, but of course this is complicated sometimes. So another idea is to uh, establish a wild social media working group. This is the idea that we think is going to work best. So we know that some people in this room have experience in communications. You have been saying that during the week. Uh, so we would like these people to be the ones centralizing the, the posting of the materials, but still all of you will need to send content. So those people will be just posting the stuff, but they need content from you because otherwise it will not work. So the uh, workshop that we are having now, uh, well, ideally we will have one person per region in the social media working group. So uh, how many of you have experience in social media and communications, like uh, in kind of like a professional, semi-professional way? Can you please raise your hand? So we have Veronica there from Europe. Come on, a, a couple more people. So Paula from SACA. Come on, someone. <laughs> OK. So we have one person from Africa. So we have three regions already. So someone from MENA. We only have two in the room, so it's going to be more complicated. Lalwa, OK. So Lalwa from MENA, uh, from NAC. Someone that would like to be? I would like to be, but I would have to learn a little bit more. Okay, but it's, it's great. If you want to do that, okay. So Diana uh, for NAC. For Saka, we have someone already. Southeast Asia. Someone? Apurva and uh, Western Pacific. Okay, super. So you are going to be the leaders of the workshop now. So please gather in seven tables and mix. You don't have to be uh, on the same uh, region. So yes, the seven leaders just go to one different table and we start the workshop. So what we want to know from your side is what do you think we should be doing? So prepare some sort of calendar, for example, so uh, the activities that you want to have. So for example, we want to have one interview per week uh, with uh, one person from the region. We want to have two stories about projects per week. So just think about that and think about how is the best way also to gather the information. And then uh, you will have 15 minutes to discuss this and just a couple of minutes to present because otherwise you are a lot, so we won't have the time. So yes, you can start now and in 15 minutes we discuss what you have thought about, okay?
So Margie, are you going to be part of the working group or? Yeah. Okay, super. Hey, everyone! Margie is going to present. Yeah, it's... It, no. um, hello, everybody. Um, at our group, we had uh, the idea to do every day a takeover on Instagram. Um, and we have like the video rota we did here. It would be like a, a rota to... Um, do a takeover in every region, in every country, but one a day, so that on a year, um, on a perspective of, of a year, we um, saw every every land, every country, uh, every country, every region, and it would be um, a day in a life um, of someone with diabetes, like uh, Monday, it's like a day in a life of Marche in Belgium, how could I uh, access my insulin? How is my breakfast? How is uh, going to the gym like that? Really, um, from the point of uh, a basic day or a special day. Um, and we would give some guidelines to make a good, um, make a good takeover. Like you give the, the right information, um, how much posts you need to post a day. And we always start with a map every takeover um, with a little circle where you are um, located, like um, a circle around Belgium, a circle around Brazil or something. And then you do a little introdu introduction, like, hi, I'm Marche, I'm from Belgium. Um, and then you do a whole day takeover. Um, sometimes it's going to be four posts, sometimes it's going to be maybe 18 posts, but really to see a life, a day, uh, yeah, a whole day for a diabetic. In, um, so people could see all the different perspectives around the world. So that was the idea. Is it everything? Yeah. All right.
And in that way, we are um, with the young leaders every day active, but it's not um, the job of one person, but we carry the job um, with, with all the young leaders around the world. So that's it. I noticed that you said Instagram. In some countries, Instagram is rarely used. So how about both Instagram and Facebook? Yeah. Stand up, please. Stand up with your screen and your screen. Yeah. Right. So you connect it, right? Instagram. Just one thing. So for the moment, we have a Facebook page and we have an Instagram page or profile or whatever. But if you want to create some other account, so an account on Twitter or something new else that I don't know about, you can also do it. We used to have an account on Twitter, but that was closed some time ago. So if we develop something on Twitter, you will have to start from zero, really. And I, also, uh, I also have a question while we're on the topic of scheduling. Um, how will we handle uh, post time you know, to accommodate to all time sections and all like, uh, time zones? Because from what I, I don't know about, about social media and like when to post, but if we post like when people are working, perhaps our posts are going to be, uh, yeah. Uh, if I can comment on it, uh, my experience was uh, po with posting that usually Friday night is the best time to post because most of the people are finishing their week. Uh, so from the numbers, when we have uh, social media campaigns, usually the, the hours when we have rush hours and people are going home in the traffic or going with the tra public transportation, uh, they have a time to check the web pages. So it's much better to post after work uh, or before work than during the day. Yeah. That's true, yes. So, someone will read your or videos or at least watch your videos. Yeah, I think uh, it would be best so the person posting from the region should post in their local time, like as it's, as it's happening. Uh, and I think like Facebook stories uh, and Instagram stories last for 24 hours. So it's going to be the whole day. Everyone will see it, you know, eventually. So if you post uh, in the morning in, uh, let's say, um, Europe, it's going to be the middle of the night in, um, in, uh, in Canada, in South America. But when you wake up, you're probably going to see it. So it's going to be shuffled. So for 24 hours, it's just enough for, for everyone to see. So for the time difference, actually, so we will have our account, but then you have your individual account. So also the idea is that we will have a post on the Facebook of uh, the, wild, uh, the Wildy, and then you will share yeah. that post when you see it. So in the end, it will cover the 24 hours, more or less, and we can keep these stories alive for a longer time. Actually, I believe that in public publications of maybe Instagram, of my experience, I can uh, see a, a, an Instagram page and see more than one publication. So it doesn't matter the time, but if, for example, I haven't got time, but every, th every Sunday I visit the page and see what has been posted on the week. It's maybe a, a way that I w it will always reach people. Yeah? The one that wants to see will see it.
Okay, so time's up. Actually, we need to go to record the video. So I have taken some notes. Can you just uh, say your names again, the people that are going to be in the working group, the seven people? Louder, please. <laughs> Here we have a, a doubt because uh, now we organize teams and are we talking about posting and the subject, etc. But um, we are going to work by regions or we are going to do it just like, uh, are we are going to, uh, I don't know, the team that we are prepared now. Are we going to post it uh, for by regions? So the idea is we have these seven people, so they will centralize the content of each region because also of, of this time difference issue that we were speaking about. Uh, so what I'm doing, I have the names of the seven people. I have taken some notes. So we will reach out to them next week, maybe just for them to think about like a proper calendar yeah. uh, that we will then share with everyone. And starting in January, we can already start with these ideas of a life in uh, a day in the life of a person with diabetes, interviews, projects, etc. So it will take a few weeks until uh, everyone is uh, up Settled. to date. And, but uh, yes, the idea is that we will start with this in January. And the seven people that have volunteered, they will have to centralize. They will not have to create the content. You will have to send that to them. But they will centralize everything to post it. Yeah, so we are going to send them Yes, the so that is up to them as a coordinators to coordinate in the regions, okay, a calendar, so this yeah. person has to send this uh, this month or whatever. That we will we will develop together a calendar. So we will have time in this week to plan, to plan for the next year? We will have to do that online because, uh, yeah, this week it's already Thursday <laughs> afternoon. So, yeah, I don't think we have the time to, to work more on social media. I believe if everyone, for example, here in Saka, uh, Paula is the responsible, the, the responsible of the team, but if we 12 people help Paula, it's not too much work. Actually, for example, I was telling Paula, I've got a lot of pictures. If you tell me like, hey guys, I need help, I I've, I've, haven't got the publication. Everyone can send one and help each other, but not being responsible, just collaborating. Okay, so time for the videos.